As you know, I'm the director, co-founder, whatever you want to call it, of Bazinga App Development. We build mobile applications for startups, well-funded startups normally, and, um, and uh, I suppose you'd call them innovative enterprises, tier one and tier twos. Um, when we started the company about four years ago, we really didn't have um, a budget for marketing. In fact, we didn't have a budget at all, and we kind of still don't have a big budget. Um, and, and, and the latter is because we've chosen to keep our budgeting, marketing budget relatively low. Um, so the challenge for us back then was how the hell do we compete with companies who have 20, 30, 40, $50,000 budgets per month um, where they can scream louder than us on social media, where they can um, advertise uh, and outbid us on AdWords and they, can, they have a louder voice uh, in, in, the, in the public space, in PR. And there was really no way we could compete with that uh, going head to head. So I started this blog, and trust me, I, I knew nothing about writing. And you can go back to some of my older stuff, and you can witness that for yourself. My writing was absolutely terrible. So if anyone's worried about writing, don't be worried anymore. You will get better. Um, so I was a terrible writer, and, and I started this blog. And the idea was that we would become thought leaders in our space. Um, and we really weren't at the time, by the way. We were, uh, we were two uh, relatively savvy entrepreneurs. My business partner is much older than I am. He's um, 58, you know, um, very, very wise man uh, and, and an incredible business person. And I was, I suppose, the, the marketing guy, you know, well, that's the role that I had to learn how to fill. So um, despite how terrible I was at, uh, at writing back then, people actually read our, um, What's the word? Crap. And, um, and we got a lot of traffic. We, we got, um, well, back then there was a lot of traffic for us. It was um, around about 500 visitors per month, and that would then translate into leads, and then I would call those leads and would turn them into customers. Right? So what I wanted to, um, um, you know, we'll fast forward four years, and our strategy has evolved quite significantly with the help of, um, of David and his team, and uh, as well as other information we've caught from, you know, here and there, and some of the things that we have innovated ourselves. But um, in this session, I wanted to share with you guys a, um, I guess, uh, a strategy that we've used or a content structure uh, that we've used that has allowed us to, to generate around about 20,000 visitors to our, to our website every month, around 400 contacts per month, and 12 new customers every month. And the average customer value is around about fifty dollars to $100,000. So, Pretty significant results, and I'm not saying that to brag. Absolutely not. Uh, we're, you know, I'm, I'm not the one developing the applications, but we've been able to achieve something that I think is really significant um, in in a really short period of time, right? So, we call it uh, tofu, mofu, and bofu content marketing, and it's really taking some of some of um, authority content. Um, and some of uh, the other stuff that me and David have talked about over the years. We've been working together for, what, three or four years now? Yeah, really since the beginning. And um, so what tofu and uh, mofu and bofu means is top of funnel, middle of funnel, and bottom of funnel. And we did not come up with that. We stole it from someone else, but I'm using it anyway. So it's about developing different types of content, right, for the different stages. Everyone's at a different stage. Um, in the buying cycle, and it's about capturing people and bringing them into your, let's say, your sphere of influence so that you can convert them into customers, right? And so there's a strategy behind it. Basically, the first step, the tofu content is all about getting people into your, into your uh, sphere of influence. It's like, it's like, imagine you're fishing and you cast a net out into the ocean. Well, it's nothing like that, okay? It's all done on your computer, okay? So... <laughs> What you do is you create, um, you create three to five blog posts that, that generally fit your target audience's interests at a, at a very high level. So it's, um, let's, let's take an example. What do you, what do, you do? Project Pro Okay. Uh, in what industry? Uh, enterprise. So tier, one. tier one. and you... Imp so, does, sorry. Does someone sell something? Sorry. <laughs> you sell something. Horse products. Horse products. Okay. What's something that... So the lady said horse products. What's something that your target audience is then generally interested in? Horses. Horses. Perfect. Can we get a prize for this woman? Yeah. <laughs> really? Okay. Drink ticket. Let's get drunk. <laughs> okay, good. Good. I'm glad we're encouraging that. Um, so, so let's say we created a, a, a relatively general, uh, you know, a, a blog post that, that someone who was 
into horses would be interested in? What's something that's happening at the moment that's, that's quite trendy or interesting? We just had the International Melbourne Free Day event. International Melbourne... An international event before the Olympics. An international event before the Olympics. Okay, so we create some content around that. Um, and maybe, maybe four or five other uh, bits of content, blog posts, and then we promote the crap out of them on Facebook, and we find out what people engage with the most. Right? So we use, um, we, we, use, uh, you know, we use things that are trending at the moment. So for, a, for an app development company that works with startups, things like um, Ideas Boom. Right? Who's heard about the Ideas Boom? No one? Okay, yes, thank you. I'm not the only crazy person in the world. Um, the ideas boom and female entrepreneurship. It's absolutely blowing up. In fact, one of our blog posts for female entrepreneurship has got 40,000 uh, views, right, which is quite a lot, and, um, and, uh, yeah, and has generated just a stupid amount of leads. Um, but it's because it's trending that people want to read it, right? And so uh, not 40,000 um, uh, readers, by the way, 40,000 uh, impressions and then some 5,000 uh, actual readers. Um, and so you, so you promote that out and you find out which ones are, are um, converting the best or which ones are bringing the most people in. And the one that's doing the best is the only one you keep, right? The one that's getting the most people in at the lowest possible cost um, on Facebook, cost per click. Does anyone, everyone use Facebook? Is no one? Yep. Yeah? Okay, good. Um, has anyone clicked on something on Facebook, like a link or something? Yep, a lot of nodding hands. Yep, one over here. Beautiful. And... Um, and has that been related to anything, uh, you know, you, that you're embarrassed about or, you know? Yeah, again? <laughs> um, yeah, cause it, and, and, then, and then what you do is you, you take that blog post, because you can, you can really target in on the people that, you, um, that are your customers or that generally fit your customer base. So age, location, um, what else? Age, location, interests. So if they're interested in horses, then that's probably a good um, you know, place to go to. And, and then you boost the crap out of it and just get all the people in the world just to come into your, to your website, right? And that's where, the, um, that's where it gets really interesting. Um, because as soon as they land on your website, you cookie the browser. Does everyone know what that means? Has anyone gone on a blog or uh, on like an e-commerce store and they've gone to like look at, I don't know, something, shoes or something or horses and and um, then they've gone to a new site and then boom, it's everywhere. That same product is everywhere. The reason why that happens is because they've uh, cookied your browser, right? So they're following you around. You've got this little, what's called a cookie, which is basically a little uh, snippet of code that's on your browser and it's following you around and everywhere there's ad space, that advertisement, well that ad will, will show up, right? So they've gone to your website, they've, they've gone on Facebook, they've seen this amazing cool um, blog post, they've clicked it, They've gone to your website, and now you've cookied their browser. Okay, so that's the that's the process for top of the funnel content marketing. Has everyone got that? Okay, cool. That leads us into middle of the funnel content marketing. So the the idea with middle of the funnel content marketing is it's it's a little bit less general and a little bit more specific. So for example, um, I clicked the the horses um, event thing. I remember what it was, but I'm not going to say it. Um, and, and I've landed on your website, and I'm like, wow, this blog post is really good. And I start scrolling down, and then boom, this thing pops up. This, uh, has anyone noticed the, the, the pop-ups that come up, little light boxes? Who loves those? Oh, yes, actually. Wow, I was not expecting that. Um, so, so this thing pops up, and you have the choice, do I download this um, uh, whatever it might be, or do I not? And that, that, whatever it is, let's say it's an ebook, is a little bit more specific to what it is that you do. What is it you do again? Sell horse product. Sell horse product. Okay. So it's, um, let's say, is it like food product? Like, um, saddles. Saddles. Like saddles. So the, okay, let's go with saddles. Saddles. Let's say saddles is our, our core product and we, and we want to sell a lot of saddles. So the, the content at this stage is how to choose all the five um, must-haves for a saddle for your horse or something. And that's terrible. Please don't use that. <laughs> Do not use it. We can work on it. Um, and, and people will go, oh, yeah, I want that, or no, I don't want it. And then they'll leave, right? Or maybe they don't have time right now. Or maybe they're, um, they were on the toilet and they just you know, finished and they're, now they're off and working again. 
whatever happened, they've left. And so the cookie is following them around everywhere they go, and they go back on Facebook, and it's horse saddles again, and horse saddles everywhere, their entire life is horse saddles. At some stage, you would have to assume that a person would go mad enough to actually click on that thing and take them to the, a, a landing page that's designed to convert you, or to, to get you to part with your details, basically, and um, your, your email address and your full name, or just the first name. And that's the end of the middle of the funnel. But basically, what we've got now is you've, you've gone from Facebook, you've landed on our website, for whatever reason, you decided that you wanted to, um, I suppose, accept the offer, right? And the offer was the horse saddle, or, or I mean, just think of an example that's more specific to your business. But um, and now you're a little bit further down the buying funnel. We've gotten rid of the people who are not necessarily going to ever buy from you, and we're now talking to people who are much more likely to actually purchase your product. Okay, and the, th and the second thing we you'll notice here as well is that you've created two bits of content that these people have read that has positioned you as an expert because you know more about horse products than anyone else, right? Or anyone else that they've met. And you you'll be surprised at how few companies are using this strategy. Like, no one, right? That authority content, no one's doing this really, are they? Okay, a lot of, a lot of his friends are using it. <laughs> Very few of my friends use this. So, by the way, who's, who's actually like subscribed to a, a, a blog or, or downloaded an ebook about horse saddles or anything else ever before? Raise some hands. Okay, cool. So, does that tell us something? Does that tell us that this maybe works? Hence, we're all here. And that leads us to the next part, which is. Bottom of the funnel, yes. <laughs> Bofu. Yeah, who said that? Show me the man who said that. Really? We'll throw it. Like a frisbee. <laughs> it's a physics thing. Yeah, that seems challenging. Okay, so bottom of the funnel content. The strategy with this content, or the idea with this content, is it's, it's designed to... It's much, much targeted to your buyer, and it's designed to actually help your customer commit to purchasing your product, right? So it's not about com making them purchase it now, but it's about, it's about helping them make the first commitment, right? So what they've done is they've found your, your blog post online, they've, they've gone to, uh, so on, on Facebook, they've gone to your website, they've been cookied, they've left because they were, you know, busy, and then they've, uh, your, your advertising has appeared in every aspect of their life and they've decided to click on your ad and that's taken them to a landing page and they're wowed by the amazing sales copy that, that uh, you've written or maybe David's written for you or someone's written for you or you've written it yourself. Um, and they've downloaded your ebook or whatever it might be, checklist. And, um, and now they're really intrigued. They're like, man, this guy or woman or company just absolutely knows their stuff about horse products. And so at that stage, they receive an email and they're thinking, that can't be automated. That has to be a real person behind that email. And sure enough, it is automated because you're sending this out to around about 1,000 people every month and, or thereabouts. And the email is about an offer. You're making an offer to them. And that offer is more specific, again, to them committing to purchasing your product. So for example, if it was horse saddles, you sell um, horse saddles and, and horse products online, like, like e-commerce? OK, beautiful. Horseland.com.au, that's where you buy all the stuff. That's where I buy it. <laughs> buy it now. <laughs> so, so you buy your, <laughs> so you're selling horse products. So what do people want then? What do people want when they're, when they're buying their first ever horse product? Maybe they, a bit, what's, what's that? Price. A good price? Yeah. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I don't know, but is it? It is. Good. Uh, probably. Um, so, they, so they buy the, they, they're, they're like, oh, yeah, I really want this um, horse saddle, but um, it's so expensive, maybe I could get a discount, and you actually have offered them a discount of 25%. I don't know if your margins are big enough for that, but, but that's, an, that's a way to get them to commit to purchasing from you the first time. Statistically speaking, and I, and I think you'll back me on this, is um, 
uh, once your customer buys from you the first time, it's much easier to get, to the, get them to part with their money again. Yeah? I found that to be true um, online. And so, so you get them to commit the first time, and then they're a committed client from then on, providing you can keep them happy and they don't go off with a, another customer, uh, sorry, another uh, service provider. Now, if you're in another industry, you can offer something different. What industry are you in? AdWords. Okay, so you can offer them a free, a free AdWords consultation um, thing, you know, like a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, strategy session. This guy's the copywriter, not me. So you can offer them like a free, like I'll sit down with you and I'll work with you and I'll help you figure out how to do this. I mean, you probably already know the, most of this stuff, right? Just nod, just nod. <laughs> what, what, oh yeah, you project manager, sorry. Just on the, the guy on his phone, what does he do? Responsive email marketing? Yeah. And so you could offer, so that's a service, isn't it? So you could go in and you could, you could offer the same, same sort of thing. I'll get you more customers with responsive email marketing. We, we sell mobile um, app development. So we offer a $500 free, though, you know, it's valued at $500, free obligation-free uh, obligation strategy session to work through all this sort of um, crap. I mean, I, has anyone ever built an app before? It's really hard. Like it's, there's so much involved. So we sit down and we work through with them and kind of figure out what they should and shouldn't be doing. And, and so people are like, wow, that's really good value. I'm going to come in and I'm going to do that. But, and this is the last part, the issue with that is you're going to have like 500 people wanting to work with you and you don't have 500 hours in the, in the month, let alone the week, let alone the day. So what you do is you hire a 19-year-old boy, that's what we've done, who sits there and calls, calls all these guys who've made an application for this $500 but free, obligation free thing, and um, he qualifies them. And he finds the highest, most highest potential value clients for you, and then books them for an appointment with you, and then you go in and you close the deal. And the beautiful thing about that is, from the very first engagement or the very first um, time that they saw your brand, they've been educated and they've been impressed and now they're sitting in front of you and they're like, man, Mark, you're a legend, right? Can you see the power in that? It's all about using this, well, what we do is we use this strategy and then we layer, layer it with authority content and it works really well, right? That's kind of all I've got. I, I'm, I'm grateful for your time. Thank you very much. What would make you watch this video all the way through to the end? Everybody's drowning in content. Everybody. As a business owner, you need to create content that engages your audience. It's as simple as that. Give me something helpful, something that answers my question. Now you've got my attention. You need a better way to create a lot of great content in a short period of time. You can't shoot a great video, make a fresh podcast, and write a quality article every day and run a business at the same time. Trust me, I've tried it. It doesn't work. You know it doesn't work, otherwise you'd be doing it. But there is a way. 